Let me focus once more on the anti-Jewish hatred and pro-Palestine propaganda that is sweeping this country. Let's start in Victoria, where Muslim groups are boycotting an annual iftar dinner with the Premier during the holy month of Ramadan. They're doing this because they claim the government, the state government that is, is not doing enough to protest the ongoing genocide in Gaza. Now, as if that's not bad enough, I mean, we all know war is hell, of course, and we all want peace, but to characterise a war against the terrorist butchers of Hamas as genocide is just sickening. The Palestinian population has doubled over the past 40 years, and it's Hamas that is founded on the goal of annihilating Israel and the Jewish people. Now, the current war began, of course, on October the 7th last year, when Hamas terrorists invaded peaceful Israeli towns and kibbutzes and a music festival de dedicated to peace, and they slaughtered more than a 1,000 innocent people. I can't show you pictures of what happened. It's too grotesque, too confronting. But I've seen much of it, too much of it. Innocents killed at point blank in a frenzy of hate. And then there's the hostages, like this mother, Shiri Bibas, and her three-year-old and nine-month-old sons. Just three of hundreds taken, many killed, some freed, most those still held, although Israel fears many of those are already dead. As I keep saying, Hamas could end the war in Gaza overnight by freeing the hostages it still holds, returning the bodies of those it has killed, and surrendering its terrorist operatives. Anyway, the Victorian Muslim communities apparently have a different view, and they're going to boycott that annual dinner. And in an effort to justify this decision, just have a listen to how the president of the Islamic Council of Victoria characterised what happened on October the 7th in this ABC radio interview this morning. It is absolutely legitimate for the Palestinians to try to break the siege of Gaza. No, I'm talking about October the 7th. As I said, I'm not going to condemn the Palestinians for resisting. I'm not going to condemn the Palestinians for trying to break their siege on their territory. So, Sorry, I, I just want to be clear. October the 7th, yeah. you're saying you won't denounce that? I denounce any violence against civilians. That is clear. 1,200 people we died. All uh, we denounce, I'm mean, very clear, Patricia, we denounce any violence and killing of civilians, but we, what we don't denounce very clearly is legitimate act of resistance. And for the Palestinians to rise up on October 7th and say, we're no longer going to tolerate this siege, this occupation, that's legitimate. Now, if they've, they've done things, if they've done things that is against international law, then they should be held to account for that. that I, I don't think we can be any clearer than that. But they, they but have a right to Do you honestly, resist. I don't mean to be rude and interrupt, but are you honestly saying that the October 7 event was the Palestinians rising up? It was, it was a terror attack, wasn't it? Well, that's the way it's been, that's the way it's been categorised. Yeah, good questioning from the ABC on that occasion. That's the way it's been characterised because that is what it was. The worst act of terrorism the world has seen since 9-11. One of the most gruesome and hateful mass murders ever recorded. The greatest loss of Jewish lives in a single day since the Holocaust. When Islamic leaders in this country say anything that attempts to justify or downplay this atrocity, they don't just undermine their own position, they undercut the social fabric of this nation.